Hey and welcome back. Uh, in this video, we'll be covering about tuples. Uh, actually, we only have very few slides with it, so this is going to be a very quick video. Anyway, let's get into it. So, we learned about lists. Basically, it's like a container where you can easily change the content uh, as necessary and useful for iterating through all the items, uh, typically of the same type. Tuples are a little bit different, so they have similarities. So they're also like a container, but uh, instead of using the square brackets, you're going to use, be using the round brackets, the parentheses. Um, and the differences is that uh, tuples are immutable. So remember the term mutable means it's changeable. So if we say immutable, that means we cannot change the stuff inside. So once you create a tuple, um, the items in the tuple are no longer uh, changeable. And also, uh, tuples, because they're immutable, uh, it only has two methods, uh, count and index, because we cannot do any insertions, deletions, or uh, things like that. We can only look up um, what's where and also count how many items there are. So here are some examples of um, creating tuples. Um, but essentially, once you create it, you can no longer change the content inside. Um, all right. So which one should you be using? Well, in many cases, you'll be using lists for um, processing data where it needs like an update or changing or however you want to do it. Um, but this is possible normally when you have all the same type inside a list. So use list when all elements have the same type and also a condition that it makes sense to think of an element as a list. So if you are arranging items, um, but it doesn't make sense to be a list, then you shouldn't be using it. For example, you have list of fruits, then possibly it's uh, captured well with the list. But if you have a mixture of types like uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, some other consumables, frozen fr um, food, whatever, then it may not necessarily be a good idea. Unless, of course, you can see that as a whole as like a grocery list, right? So that's another um, example. Um, use tuples in any of the following situations where you're dealing with uh, inhomogeneous data. So you have different characteristics of data that needs to be stored uh, at the same place. For example, uh, details about a person with uh, their name, address, age, postcode, um, and others. In other case, you think of an element as being part of a single object. So it's like a property of a single object, right? Um, lastly, you need or want immutability. So you don't want the data that has been created to be changed by other functions or other programs, right? Uh, so for example, keys for dictionary, uh, which we'll cover uh, later on. But uh, when you think about searching for the meaning of the word, uh, you find the word in the dictionary, it tells you the explanation. The explanation may change over time, but normally the word doesn't, right? So these words, uh, what we call a key in a dictionary, uh, are immutable um, objects inside. Right? Uh, the usefulness of um, tuples combined with Python is that you can do parallel assignments. So what normally happens when we think about equations is that um, after you calculate something, it produces a single value. Um, however, that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes it will produce multiple values, all right? And you can capture all of these as a tuple and store it, as well as returning it uh, from a function. So if you know a function, if you implement a function that's going to return multiple values of different types, and it makes sense to store them as a tuple, then you can capture all of the information uh, as a tuple as well, right? So uh, that's go from creation first and then uh, retrieving values. So here, a person named Fred Bloggs um, of these details, age, address, and postcode, uh, may be created uh, somewhere in the program. Then uh, this person is now a tuple containing this data, right? And out of um, 
few lines, uh, you're going to do something with it, and maybe you create some other person, uh, you change it, then you may want to retrieve some individual items to process something. Uh, then you can again um, assign individual variables to capture in, uh, those um, items that are stored in the tuple uh, in such way that you can unpack. So you can unpack a tuple uh, which stores a bunch of items onto a single variables uh, inside a tuple. So let's do this example. Here we go. Uh, so person equals just going to create an arbitrary on uh, begins of age 16 at address 15 ABC Road postcode 6000. So now we have a mixture of um, strings and integers for this type, right? So if we just quickly run this and then type person, so we see that as a tuple. Uh, we double check that we cannot modify the content. So person of at index zero, we should get the first name. Let's try to change this to Ben. Then it's going to complain uh, that tuple object does not support item assignment. So this ensures that we cannot change uh, the content of the tuple. Okay, so now we got that. Uh, what we can do is uh, out of the few functions, maybe um, it's going to create other personal details, right? But we don't have the function. So let's just say we are working with this person being returned. Then what we can do is if we want to use individual um, items uh, assigned to specific variables, uh, we can create that. Uh, first name, last name, age, address, and postcode equals person. Okay. So what we have done is pretty much map individual items uh, from this person's tuple onto a single uh, variables. So if we look at locals, here we created first name, last name, and all of that, where uh, items from this person's tuple that we had uh, mapped onto these um, variables. So now if I look up F name, it's going to contain Tom, last name is going to contain Higgins and so forth. This means now I can use these and um, if, we, if necessary, do some other processing. For example, uh, looking up um, this personal data in other databases and so forth. Okay. So um, this is a summary combining everything, but that's pretty much it for tuples, really, because tuples are immutable. You can't really do much about it rather than storing data and make sure that they don't get changed. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.